This week on The Anxious Truth, we have some new music for the podcast, and we're going to be talking about why you got to do your exposures and meet your challenges even on the days when you don't want to do it. So let's get at it. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to The Anxious Truth. This is episode number 266 of the podcast. We are recording in July of 2023. In case you are listening from the future, I am Drew Linsalata, creator and host of The Anxious Truth. If this is your first time here, The Anxious Truth is the podcast and the YouTube channel that covers all things anxiety, anxiety disorders, and anxiety recovery. So if you've stumbled upon us for the first time today, welcome. I'm glad you're here, and I hope you find it all helpful or useful in some way. And of course, if you are a returning listener or viewer, welcome back. I'm glad you're here as always. This week, we're going to talk about a very common anxiety recovery mistake that gets made in this community all the time. And that is, if you have decided that you kind of want to get better the way I talk about getting better, you want to do exposures, you want to meet your challenges, you want to stop avoiding, you want to face your fears, that's really awesome. But one of the more common mistakes that I see people make is waiting till they have good days or better days before they stop avoiding, before they face their fears, before they meet those challenges, before they do those exposures. And while I can understand why you would do that, that's not terribly helpful because the most progress you will make, because the greatest lessons you will learn comes on your worst days when you feel like you shouldn't do those things. So we're going to talk about that. Before we do, I want to remind you that The Anxious Truth is more than just this podcast episode or this YouTube video. There are 265 other free podcast episodes and YouTube videos that came before this one. I've written three books on anxiety and anxiety disorders. There's a ton of free social media content. I have a bunch of really useful courses and workshops that I've been developing over the last six or eight months. All of those things can be found on my website at theanxioustruth.com. So I urge you to take advantage of all the resources, pop on over to the website, that's theanxioustruth.com, check it all out. And if you are using this work on a regular basis in your recovery, you're digging it, I'm helping in some way, and you want to find a way to support the work in some formal way, all the ways you can do that are at theanxioustruth.com slash support. And as always, financial support, buying merch, buying a book, whatever it is, Always appreciated, but never, ever, ever required. And any way that you can find to support this work, even if that just means hitting like on the YouTube video or subscribing to my channel, writing a podcast review so other people can find it, thank you so much. I appreciate the support and the encouragement. So let's get into today's topic. If you are listening to me and you have been engaged in the process of trying to face your fears now or do exposures or go toward your challenges, stop avoiding face your fears, all of those things. That's really awesome. You're doing some brave work and you're doing hard things for you, which I think is great. You're doing something difficult, but you're doing it for you. And I think that's great. But you may also be stuck in a loop where you kind of wait until you have better days, days where maybe you don't feel so anxious. Maybe you feel a little better. You feel a little jazzed. Maybe you're a little enthusiastic. You're maybe a little more inspired that day. And then you break your avoidance cycle and sort of venture out and tentatively try an exposure or try something that you're afraid to do. And listen, if you are going out and meeting that fear and trying to meet that challenge and facing your fear and you're not avoiding, I don't care if you are waiting until the good days to do it. I love that you're doing it. You got to get the credit for the fact that you're taking some forward steps. It is way better than just sitting on the sofa. So kudos to you if that's the way you're doing it. It's a fine way to start. But you may be trapped in that cycle where you do those things on the good days. But then if you feel like you're having a bad day, maybe your anxiety is a little higher, or you're feeling tired or stressed, or you're just feeling a little weaker and vulnerable, and you're afraid you might be triggered. So that's a day where you decide, I don't want to overdo it. I'm not going to do my exposures today. I'm going to take a rest day. I'm going to retreat. I'm going to hide. I'm going to avoid because I don't feel so good. You're kind of shortchanging yourself in your recovery. Again, let me be very clear. If you are starting by venturing out on the days where you feel a little better, and that's the way you're starting, that's totally okay, because most people would do it like that. I've often said that I would rather see you do exposures with safe people or safety devices than to not do them. And the same uh, logic applies here. I would rather you wait till you have a good day, or a better day where you don't feel so bad and then go out and try to meet some challenges or face your fears on those days, then to never do it. So 
it's okay if this is the way you've started and it's okay if you're kind of doing it that way. But at some point, you will find that if you only wait for the good days to meet your challenges, face your fears and do your exposures, you will find that maybe you're not making progress. And you might be tempted to say, I don't understand I'm doing things now, but nothing is changing. Here's the rub with that. When you do it that way, and you only do the scary things, the hard things, the challenging things, you only do your exposures, whatever it happens to be. If you only do those on the days when you feel like you should, or you feel like you can, then you are reinforcing your brain's mistaken belief that when you feel anxious, or you're afraid, or you're worried, or you're feeling a little bit weaker or less capable, your brain is going to tell you to retreat because you can't do it. And if you do retreat, you are reinforcing the mistaken belief that drives the disordered state. And that kind of stinks. So it's not like you're making this huge, horrendous, like, you know, t terrible mistake. That's just like a recovery crime. But what you are doing is you're, you're not really giving yourself the best chance to move forward on a consistent basis. And if you're finding yourself sort of frustrated or stuck, because well, I'm, I'm doing the things, but nothing's really working and nothing's changing. And I don't feel any different. And I don't, I'm still really afraid to go out. Yeah, that could be because you're waiting for the good days. And on the days when you don't think you should go out, or you don't think you should do an exposure, you don't think you should do your ERP homework, whatever it happens to be. Because yeah, I just shouldn't do it today. It's going to be too much. I might get triggered. You're forgetting the, uh, the, the reason why you do the hard things. We do exposures, we face fear, we meet challenges, we do our ERP homework. If you're working with a therapist, and you're in the OCD world, we do that to be triggered, right? Always remember that the purpose of the of the exposure is not to try to do something without being anxious or uncomfortable. The purpose of the exposure is to intentionally get triggered. We want that. We want that because we need to practice moving through that triggered state, that anxious state, that that frightened state, that uncertain state. Recovery is all about those experiences and learning from them. We're learning that we're capable. We're learning that we can handle it. We learn that we've always been able to handle it. We learn that we're stronger than we ever gave ourselves credit for. We're learning that we're braver than we ever gave ourselves credit for. And those are the, the experiences. Those are the lessons. Those are the things that build recovery. It's not about learning to not panic or not have scary thoughts. It's about learning to panic and have scary thoughts, sometimes intentionally, so that you can work on moving through those things more productively and in, in a healthier way, in a way that ultimately brings anxiety and scary thoughts and symptoms back into like a regular place, a normal place in a human life. But if you only do those things, when you're sure that you won't be triggered, then you're kind of missing the core principle of why we do this. So unfortunately, what this is all going to boil down to and what's going to be a relatively short podcast episode today is that it is most valuable in recovery to do those things on the days when you feel like you shouldn't do those things. On the days when you feel like you shouldn't do them, on the days when you feel like you can't do them, on the days when it feels like it's a little bit too much, you're a little too fragile, a little too weak, and you might get triggered if you do them. Those are the days that you have to do them. Now, it's okay, especially early on, as you're kind of getting a lay in the land here, lay the land. It's okay to say, well, my plan today, because hopefully you have a bit of a plan, you're not making it up as you go along. And by the way, this is one of the reasons why I talk about making a recovery plan. When I wrote the anxious truth, the book, the recovery guide, I did a whole section of that book, there's a lot of words in that book about making a recovery plan. And one of the reasons why I say that you, you should make one to the best of your ability, not everything can be planned, but to the best of your ability is we don't ever want to make up recovery as we go along. Because it feeds right into today's podcast topic. If you make it up as you go along, an anxious mind will always tell you to wait, don't go out today, today's not a good day, don't do it today. It will lead you right into the trap that I'm addressing today. When I say you have to do the things, even on the days when you think you shouldn't, because you're not having a good day, you're having a bad day, if you will. If you have a plan that says on Wednesday, I'm going to go do my driving exposure at 10am, if you can be that detailed, that's great. Then Wednesday at 10am, you do your driving exposure. It doesn't matter if it's a good day or a bad day, you do it. Now, I, I understand that sounds really difficult. Like, man, like I don't get a break here. Like, does it have to be that way? Why are you being so aggressive about this, Drew? 
I'm not being aggressive to be aggressive. It's not about that. Heck, the new music at the beginning of the podcast, notwithstanding, this isn't aggression for the sake of being aggressive or hardcore or being a warrior or like being alpha. It has nothing to do with that. We have to do the things on the hard days because that's when we learn that we're capable of doing hard things, even when we think we can't. When we have the most doubt, that's the best time to actually prove that doubt wrong, if you will, in simplest terms. So having a recovery plan, which I wrote about in the book, and I've talked about many, many times on the podcast and in social media posts, is important because the plan tells you what you're going to do. Now, on a given day, you may scale that plan back a little bit, especially as you're sort of new to this. And if you're breaking the habit of only doing exposures on good days, and you're going to start to do them on bad days, I understand that you might scale back a little bit on the on the bad days. I get that. It's not that common for people to just say, okay, Drew said to do hard things on bad days, and you just dive right in. And some people can do that. Most people can't. So if your plan is, I got to start driving, and I'm going to drive five days out of the next seven, and I'm going to do four laps around my neighborhood, and that's my practice for the week. On the day that you feel like, oh my God, it's impossible to get out the door. For example, I'm using driving as an example. Whatever your challenge is, you apply that in your situation. But if you're going to scale it back a little bit that day to sort of accommodate the fact that you are terrified, it's okay to start that way. Again, if you're new to doing exposures and meeting challenges and, and facing fear on the bad days, you might scale back a little bit on what you think you want to do a little bit, a little bit. But you don't want to scale all the way back to the point where you just don't do anything. You wait and you hide and you hope, feel, you hope to feel better tomorrow. Because not only are you kind of shortchanging yourself and not allowing your brain to have the experiences it needs to learn the lessons of recovery, but you're also going to feel a little worse the next day. Now, I'm not saying you're going to feel worse from an anxiety standpoint, but emotionally, that retreat begins to take its toll. So when you are so desperate to get better and you feel somewhat committed to the recovery process, but you back up on the bad days and only do the work on the good days, you can wind up in that situation where you start to feel bad about yourself, especially if it's one of those things where like, oh, I feel like I'm sort of getting the ball rolling. This is awesome. I've been out or I've been, I've been doing exposures. I've been breaking my avoidance cycle mostly in the last week. This is great. More days than not. And then you wake up and for whatever reason, your brain is in high gear and you have a lot of scary thoughts or your anxiety symptoms are raging that morning and you retreat and that turns into a day or two of retreat. The emotional impact of that, and I know this because I've been there, can be significant. Oh, I'm back to square one. Nothing's working. Here I am. And then you feel bad about yourself because you avoid it again when you know you shouldn't. So make a plan as best you can, then execute that plan as best you can, no matter how you feel which I wish I didn't have to say that. But I do have to say that. Because if you do it that way, you can avoid that negative, harsh self judgment. I'm failing. I'm too weak. I did it wrong. I'm back to square one. I ruined my recovery. I can't do it. Especially if you're listening to this podcast, and you've read my books, and you know all the material already. And you know that avoidance is the worst thing for you. When you give in to the avoidance and only do your your hard things on the easy days when you're feeling good, you will know you're avoiding and then you're in that rock in a hard place. I want to do exposures. I want to face my fear. I want to get better. I like this idea, but I'll only do it on the good days, which means you do hard things when they're easier to do. And then when you don't do them and you avoid, then you start beating yourself up because you know you're avoiding you shouldn't. That's not fair. See how you're, you're, you're trying to serve two masters there. I want to serve the recovery master but I also want to be able to rest and retreat and avoid when I feel bad. Can't You can't have both. We got to pick, pick one and go with it as best you can. Again, all of this is always you do the best you can, but you really do have to make the effort to do the best you can. If you're doing that and you're willing to learn the lessons that those experiences teach us, then I know it's cliche, but we never lose. We either win or we learn. And if you're winning, if you're learning, you're winning anyway. So you either win or you win. Make the effort, do the things even on the days when you are sure that you can't. And I know that that means you have to be brave. And I know that that means you have to ignore the, the powerful drive to just crawl under the covers and hide. But when you can do that, when you could take that leap of faith in yourself, when you could roll the dice and bet on yourself, and you can see, well, that wasn't so much fun. 
but I did it and I can do it. I thought it was impossible. I didn't like it. I was scared. I was uncomfortable, but I did it. That is a huge lesson. That's such an important experience to have. Even if that experience doesn't look the way you want it to, it's not ideal. It's not pretty. It's not pleasant. It's not anything, but it is educational. And it does teach you that you are capable of doing the hard things, even on the hard days, not just on the good days. How's that for like an almost completely uninterrupted, off the cuff rant about this particular topic that took us about 15 minutes to do minus the intro. I'm not going to belay the point belabor the point. I think I've said what I need to say. I may have made you confront some things that you don't want to confront. If that is the case, take a little time reflect on this. You're not ruining your recovery. You're not hopeless. You're not weak. You're not doing it wrong. Everybody needs some instruction. Everybody kind of makes this mistake. So if this was an eye opener for you, if the last 15 minutes opened your eyes and, and made you see that you need to change your plan or make a plan or change course a little in your recovery, challenge yourself a little more, join the club. That's not a negative reflection on you. You just needed some instruction. And I was happy to provide it. And I hope it was helpful. So that pretty much is episode 266 of the podcast in the can. Uh, we're going to sign off with the new music. It's royalty free. I don't even know if it has a name, but I do like it. Anyway, I'm going to ask you guys a favor as I always do. If you are listening to this podcast on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or some platform that lets you rate and review podcasts, leave us a five star rating and maybe write a review if you like the podcast because it helps other people find it, then more people can get some help. And that's why I do this to begin with. If you are watching on YouTube, it's a boring video because you don't see me, it's just a still image. But nonetheless, maybe subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell when you find so that you know when I upload new content, leave a comment, I answer all my YouTube comments, I always circle back at least twice a week to do that. If you have an idea or a suggestion for me, leave it in the YouTube comments. Like I said, I circle back and listen to all of them. And that is it. We are out. I will be back next week on the anxious truth. I'm going to also suggest that if you're not listening to disordered, which is the new podcast that I do with Josh Fletcher, you can find that at disordered.fm. This podcast comes out on Wednesdays. Disorder comes out on Fridays. That is some of the best work I've done. I'm digging disordered, so go check it out. And remember, if I gave you something to think about today, think about it for a while, reflect, and go act on it. Because any step that you take forward in your recovery, no matter how tiny it may be, it does matter. They all add up. They will get you where you need to be if you keep taking those steps. Hang in there, and I will see you next week. <laughs>